in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from our Father and the Lord Christ be with you and also with you. It is good for us to be here Today, salvation has come to this house. I'm Reverend Anne. I am the vicar of the parish of Luton St Anne with St Christopher. And today we are gathered together in St Christopher's Church to celebrate the feast of the transgression. gather and we make confession to our Heavenly Father. When Christ appears we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is, as he is poor, pure. All who have grasped this hope make themselves pure. So let us confess our sins that mar his image in us. We will use the Kyrie form of confession. So please join with me in repeating the final line of each section of our confession. Your unfailing kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, and your justice as the great deep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our collect for this, the day of the Lord's transfiguration. Father in heaven, whose Son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross, that in the world we may to come we may see him as he is, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you have been standing, I invite you now to be seated as we hear the word of God. Our first reading today comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 to 10 and 13 to 14. As I watched, thrones were set in place. And an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, his 
hair of his head like a wall. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming from the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away. And his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we hear now Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You're exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil, he guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. And our New Testament reading comes from the second letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 16 to 19. For we did not cleverly... Sorry, for we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we, were, when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honour and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place 
for the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to be standing as we proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent. And in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We do indeed have some very bright sunshine shining through an upper window in St Christopher's Church. Quite appropriate, really, as today we have come together to celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord. But I wonder what that means to each of us. Transfiguration has a de dictionary definition of a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. In this light, 
the junk undergoes a transfiguration. It shines. A biblical definition, however, is that it is an event in Jesus' life in which his appearance was radiantly transformed. We have heard two tellings of this event in today's readings. While the readings from Daniel and the psalm tell us of the power and the majesty of God, of light overcoming darkness, we see in these readings a foretelling of the resurrection of Jesus. Transfiguration gives us a glimpse of the divine body of Christ, the body recognizable as Jesus, unlike the risen Christ that Mary Magdalene met on Easter morning. Here on Mount Tabor, Peter, James, and John saw the divinity of Christ. That they were awestruck is a given. On this day, each year, we're drawn to th into thinking about the impact this event had on those three disciples. But today, I'm still pondering a question that has arisen for me from my reading of John Francis Friendship's book, The Mystery of Faith. He makes a statement, when Jesus reached the summit of this mountain, he had a profound experience of divine overshadowing and was transfigured, enlightened, as he heard the words, you are my beloved. It's left me pondering what and how Jesus felt. Wondering whether he was expecting this as he took his core team to him, with him up the mountain. Jesus heard those words, you are my beloved. And yet G Jesus is an equal part of the triune Godhead. God is proclaiming his love for that part of himself which he had let go of. Jesus was fully human. And so for this time, he was separate from God the Father. Jesus, the incarnate God, was leading and teaching his chosen band of followers. I think that Jesus was neither surprised nor disturbed by this revelation. You are my beloved. Indeed, this is the second time God had proclaimed to Jesus and those present that he is God's beloved. The first time was at his baptism. Here, though, Jesus is with Moses who was not allowed at the end of the exile to enter the promised land. And yet here he is in the heart of the transfiguration of Jesus. Moses, the father of the Jewish people, has finally reached the promised land. Elijah, the prophet who stood at the entrance of the cave, and witnessed the still, small voice, the Holy Spirit, the prophet who was taken away in a chariot of flames, another insight into the Holy Spirit. And the three of them witnessed Jesus completely changed face shining with Moses and Elijah. In this threesome, we are reminded of the Holy Trinity. Together they are planning and preparing for Jesus' death in Jerusalem, while at the same time 
The disciples are fighting off the sleep that tried to overwhelm them. I wonder what was said in that conversation between Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. I wonder what the preparations were and how they worked out. The transfiguration is a precursor to the death of Jesus. Jesus, with Peter, James, and John, went up the mountain to pray. Jesus and the disciples prayed. The disciples avoided falling asleep, and so they witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus and his meeting with Moses and Elijah. The disciples, when they later come to the Garden of Gethsemane, fail to stay awake while Jesus prays. In this event, there are many connections with Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. St. John reports that the disciples kept quiet about all that they had seen. That is, until after the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus. Silence was broken at the right time. The impact of the trans transfiguration on us today is something that Michael Ramsey, the Archbishop of Canterbury from 1961 to 1974, thought about as he reflected on the work of, uh, of Arnold Toynbee, a British historian and philosopher who explored the transfiguration in terms of accepting a situation as it is and then placing it into a bigger context before grappling with it. Michael Ramsey encourages us to see Jesus crucified and risen as the bigger context. And if we look through the lens of the bigger context, Christ crucified and risen, we're able to see things, especially things that cause us pain, in a new light, reframed and with exciting possibilities. This gives us the opportunity to see the transfiguration in terms of the transformation that Jesus offers as suffering is overcome. We see this as people who have either experienced or witnessed someone going through a time of suffering. A faith firmly rooted in the love of Christ can sustain and transform their attitude to the situation. A strength often witnessed as a person relies on Jesus to help them cope, to manage a situation. They still suffer, but there is a tenderness, a peace, a steadfast and resolute trust in all that they believe. Enabling the way in which the suffering and the situation are handled to be changed they are transfigured. This transformation is witnessed by others who look on, astonished at the way in which that person is coping, managing that situation. Living in the light of Christ doesn't necessarily change the situation, but it does change how we see it and how we respond. This different light enables us to be more pragmatic, thoughtful and restrained in our response. Living with the light of the risen Lord, witnessed at his transfiguration, changes the lives of the faithful, lives that are transformed by the grace of God. This was the transformation that took place in the lives of Peter, James and John. It didn't mean that all of a sudden they were perfect human beings. Rather that they knew they were entrusting themselves into the hands of God. The transfiguration reveals to us 
the divine Christ. It gives us a glimpse of the power of Jesus to transform our lives, lives that are transformed by love. God's love for us is enlightening. It reveals to us a new way of being. If we turn our gaze on to Jesus, then we invite the Holy Spirit to fill us with love. And if we are filled with love, then ultimately that love will overflow from us and into others. Others whom we know and those whom we've as yet never met. For if we have the love of Christ within us, then we will not be able to help ourselves. That love will pour from every pore of our being that others may know too the love of Christ for them. And in turn, they too will overflow with love. Love that serves, love that reveals, love that enables. Let us overflow with God's love. As today we celebrate the transfiguration of Jesus, showing to us the divinity of our Lord and Saviour. Amen. So as we reflect on how we enable our lives to be completely transformed by the transfiguration of Jesus, how we enable love to pour from us to enable others to come to know Jesus, I invite you to stand and to make your profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now we come to our time of intercessory prayer. I invite you to either be seated or to kneel. We're going to begin with the parish's prayer for mission. So have, if you have a copy to hand, I invite you to join with me in saying, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love and gifts you have poured upon us. Be among us today as we seek to serve you. Give us confidence and encouragement in all we do to share your love. May we walk always in the steps of Jesus. Help us to provide a warm welcome to all who long to know you. We pray that we may respond 
with a desire to share more of the love of Christ. Amen. And so, in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to our Father. To the bidding, Lord, look with favour, we respond, Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord, look with favour, Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, it is good that we are here. In peace we make our prayer to you. In trust we confirm our faith in you, our desire to know you more closely, to serve you in all we do, to share your love throughout your world. Help us to set our faces steadfastly to where you would have us go. Lord, look with favour. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favour on your church, proclaiming your beloved Son to the world and listening to the promptings of his spirit. And during this time of pandemic, as we have listened more attentively to our Father, may we have an insight into the promptings the Holy Spirit has for each of us, for this parish. And may she be renewed in holiness that she may reflect your glory. Lord, look with favour. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favour on the nations of the world, scarred by hatred, strife and war. We pray particularly at this time for Lebanon, for a country that was already in turmoil with itself, a country that had a new government seeking to draw all sides together, interrupted in that work by COVID-19. And now its main city, Beirut, is in tatters. So we pray for all people affected in Lebanon and further afield as that blast was felt throughout the whole region. We pray for those who are injured and those who are missing. We hold before you, Lord, all those who have died. We give you thanks for all who are serving the needs of those in that place. For the professionals, for the medical staff, for the ordinary person who is doing all they can, especially for those who are seeking the lost. May they be healed by the touch of your hand, Lord. Lord, look with favour. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, look with favour on those in need and distress, suffering as your Son has suffered, and waiting for the salvation you promise. And so we either pray out loud or in the silence of our hearts, for those known to us who are sick in mind, body or spirit at this time.
And as a parish, we've been asked to pray for Dave and Anne, Tony, Patricia, Annette and Richard, Daniel, David, Madge and Karen, Michael, Moira, Jane and John, Elsie, Josie, Leslie, Diane, Maureen, Alison, Diana, and Dallas. May the day break and, the, and Christ the morning star bring them the light of his presence. Lord, look with favour. Lord, transfigure and heal. Lord of glory, it is good if we suffer with you so that we shall be glorified with you. According to your promise, bring all Christ's brothers and sisters, especially Diana Gilmore and Sidney Forbes who have left this earth at this time, to see him with their own eyes in majesty be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. To him be praise, dominion and worship now and for all eternity. Amen. And so we pause and bring to our Father our own cares and thankfulnesses. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we come to the time in our service when we receive the peace of Christ. Christ will transfigure our human body and give it a form like that of his own glorious body. We are the body of Christ. We share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And as I prepare the altar, I invite you to make your own offering to our Lord and Saviour. Money that will be used to reach out to others, to serve the mission and ministry of this place. I invite you to be generous, just as Christ has been generous and is generous to us.
Holy God, receive all we bring before you this day and bring us also to that radiant light which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this day he revealed his glory before his chosen witnesses, and filled with divine splendour, the human flesh in which he is one with us. So he prepared his disciples to bear the scandal of the cross and showed that in the church, his body, the same glory would be fulfilled that shone forth from him its head. And so with joyful hearts we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as they praise your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of our Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Anne, Saint Christopher and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. As I receive the body of Christ and the blood of Christ on behalf of all gathered here this evening, I invite you to make your spiritual communion, that you may be transformed by the love of Christ as he is transfigured. you bear witness to Christ in your lives. You have given us, O Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delights and sweetness in every taste.
pray. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One or two notices now before we come to the end of our worship of God together this evening. 7.30 this evening we will be having our house group. We will be talking about last Sunday's readings and the sermon there. It's going to be a bit of a stretch for some of us because this is now the third since then with uh, sermons and readings and all but we will engage with those readings, that sermon, and see what else we can learn from it. If you haven't been to house group before, please do come along. Please do come to get to know God better and get to know yourself better. Get to know your own understanding of your relationship with God in a deeper way in a way that helps you to make sense of what God has been saying to you. We meet on Zoom. Just ask me for the Zoom codes and we will make sure they're shared with you. And there are people on the ministry team, that's myself, church wardens and Diane, our reader in training, who will all happily help you to get logged on and be able to access our house groups, our virtual refreshments, the other times when we gather on Zoom. In fact, tonight, after house group, we're going to stay on Zoom. We're going to say Compline together. And if technology works, it will also be live streamed on Facebook. So nine o'clock this evening, even if you've not got Zoom codes, you should be able to access Compline tonight on our Facebook Live as you've accessed this. Other news that you have received, you should have received, I hope, your letter from me, the one that's been coming out around about every three or four weeks. The eighth letter came out a couple of weeks ago and it gives you details of the buildings and when we're going to reopen our church buildings. It asks you to complete a survey form, there's a gift aid form, there's a, a reflection on St Bartholomew, there's some prayers, there's all sorts of things in there. So please do make sure you've looked at that. If you've not received it, let me know. We can add you to the list. But just in case you've not seen it, you've forgotten, Saturday, we as a parish are doing our own food bank collection for the Luton Food Bank. We will be collecting at St Anne's from 11 o'clock until 1 o'clock, at St Christopher's from 12 noon until 2 o'clock. Please do come along. Please do bring some food. Show your love for those in our town who are struggling to feed themselves and their families. Donate some food. Tell your friends and families and neighbours and encourage them too. Help people to see that we are serving the needs of our local community. So that's a reminder. Saturday, 11 till 1 at St Anne's, 12 till 2 at St Christopher's. And those are all the notices I have for today. So I invite you to bow your heads to receive God's blessing. Christ Jesus, the splendour of the Father and the image of his being, draw you to himself, that you may live in his light and share his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light.
those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Go in peace to love and serve the transfigured Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.